Late Night Help continues. I'm Mark Allen. You know, in coming weeks, uh, Robert Clancy will be joining us on a weekly basis, uh, talking about the spiritual side of health, uh, as he does every week in our first hour. We'll also be visited by Dr. Greg Saleh as we talk about gluten-free cookies. And I have a feeling that Dr. Uh, Daryl, the insane one, and I will have some time together as well. Yeah, you should uh, talk about the last guest, talking about fruit. Bring that up with Dr. Soleil and see what he says. Oh, wait. Oh, the, yeah. he, he, he says oh, you he, can't eat that much fruit. No, he no. said you're right. We should. We, we will. That's a good point, especially when we're talking about gluten and, and sweetness and things like that. All right. Uh, Dr. Uh, Janice Vilhauer is our guest uh, from the Department of Psychiatry and Behavioral Sciences, the Emory Clinic Director of Outpatient Psychotherapy Programs. Uh, very quickly, what does that mean? Uh, Janice? Um, Well, I'm in charge of all of the psychotherapy programs, meaning uh, all of the different types of psychotherapy, the psychoservices that are provided here in our outpatient department. So those are people who are not uh, somebody like me who has radioitis, you help get rid of that rather than very serious things, or is it a combination of regular therapy as well as, you know, advanced therapy for people who might be psychotic and suicidal, et cetera? Well, in our outpatient department, we deal with a very wide variety of uh, different kinds of problems that people are struggling with. Sometimes they can be as severe as as what you just mentioned. Um, But it's really, we have lots of different types of psychotherapies, and I think that's something that not everybody knows, that that nowadays it's no longer a one-size-fits-all model where people just come in and sit down and talk. We really have lots of different types of treatments that uh, help different types of problems, and so we really try to provide a wide range of those uh, therapies to different people. And the days of extended therapy, is that over? Or do some people need regular treatment where now I understand that a lot of people go for, say, a month, maybe two months, three months, and, and then they're done? Well, it depends on the severity and the nature of the problem and, you know, the history behind it, how, how long has the problem been in existence, uh, which really determines, you know, the course of psychotherapy and how much is needed. You, depending where you go for treatment, uh, you probably can find more traditional models where people will spend, you know, years in therapy. I think therapy has evolved to the point where, as I said, we know we have specific and different types that can be applied to different problems so that people don't have to spend so much time in treatment anymore, that they can spend maybe a few months uh, of real targeted work directed at their problem. And that's really what Future Directed Therapy is all about? I mean, and your book, uh, Think Forward to Thrive? That's exactly right. So Future Directed Therapy was originally developed for people who have major depressive disorder. It's a uh, time-limited type of therapy. So it was set up originally to be uh, t- two sessions a week for 10 weeks. And you know, people come in and they learn a set of skills that we have identified uh, to be problem skills that people who have depression tend to not have many of. So things like learning how to set goals, learning how to problem solve, you know, lots of things like that, have, how to change uh, negative expectations that they have about future experiences. So we teach people very specific goals that help them deal with the depression. Somebody told me that almost everybody suffers depression at one point of their life in varying degrees. If you're depressed, can you achieve a, a resolution, a goal? And how would future, uh, future directed therapy help to achieve that goal? Well, I think everybody experiences the feeling of being sad and down and, you know, maybe has sort of emotions that might seem like depression, but to really have depression, um, you know, that's sort of prevalent in about, uh, you know, 10% of the population at any given time. So so not necessarily everybody experiences a full-blown course of depression, but they may experience, you know, some feelings of depression. So... The way that Future Directed Therapy helps people with that is we have recognized that people with depression tend to have a tendency to think maybe more negatively about the future. They have difficulty producing uh, 
positive future thought, and they have this uh, tendency to anticipate things going badly for them. And so we really work on identifying those specific thought patterns and teaching them skills for how to work through them. We're almost out of time. Uh, you, you told me, and I hope you don't mind me asking or saying this, you told me you had a resolution, and that is being happy wherever you are. Is that... <laughs> <laughs> that so, yes, that's, that's exactly right. You know, my resolution this year was to sort of be happy and not ever resist the present. So whatever sort of comes into my experience, it might not be an experience I'm you know, wanting to have, but my goal is to sort of not resist that and to not let any, not let any experience or anybody feel my happiness. <laughs> Listen, Janice, thanks for joining us. We'll have you back soon, not a year, and we appreciate your time, and we'll talk soon. I'll give you a call in a week or so. Well, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you that. very, very much. Uh, our guest has been Think Forward to Thrive author Janice Vilhauer, and she is based in Atlanta, Georgia. All right, coming up next is very serious, and we're going to talk about how cancer can affect a family uh, with Sonia Blanjardo. Did I get that close? Blanjardo. The I is not pronounced. I got it. Uh, we invite you to join us at LateNightHealth.com. LateNightHealth.com. Uh, more coming up. Don't go away. <laughs> 